Well, this is a nice surprise. I think we can see them all from here. Saying thank you to Yuri from the distance because we're very excited to see <gasps> this pack of wild dogs. Hello, everyone. Now, I wonder if this is actually the same, the Investec pack that was here last week, just because there's quite a few of them. So I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them, I think. Yeah. I do count nine of them. Hard to tell because there are a few, they're all mangled together, <laughs> just keeping together for warmth. So, what a stunning way to start the morning! Not bad at all. Hello, wild dogs. Now, we are looking at uh, Africa's or one of Africa's most endangered predators, and the time spent with them is always great time because we don't get to see them all that often. In the same way that they come in and then they'll probably spend a few days with us, then the same way they'll go away and then we won't see them for a while. Now, this particular one over here is the one that seems to be a little bit more alert. And I wonder if perhaps the Nyala and the and the um, Impala that we saw running earlier on, if they hadn't smelled the wild dogs or if they hadn't had a, a, an interesting encounter with wild dogs earlier on, and that's why they were being so skittish. Because it could be that these guys have actually been moving all the way throughout the morning. But what a way to start the morning! Woohoo! <laughs> Hello, pretty dogs! Now, look at them, all bundled up together. Look at that pile of dogs. They're looking very peaceful, aren't they? Almost like a proper, normal house dog. I think that's a very sweet scene. Tina, you're saying that they look so calm at the moment. They do. <laughs> it's, it's hard to believe that they can just very easily get up and start going and then they won't stop going for a while. I think they're all settling or they've been sleeping for a little while um, but my best guess would be that they actually woke up quite early this morning and then they've been on the run because there were no signs of them yesterday afternoon anywhere around us so wherever it is that they've come from I think they've either done it early hours in the morning or perhaps late afternoon yesterday where nobody could actually realize but look at that it's almost like a semicircle of dogs not bad at all very pretty. I got a little bit of a heart attack when we were at the dam wall and then I <laughs> picked up the binoculars. And I think Lucky this one had his head up because he was the one that I could see. Hmm, what you guys listening to? So otherwise, if they all had their heads down from where we were, it would have been virtually impossible to find them. Lara, you're saying that you love their colors. They're quite interesting, those dogs that we've got. He or this one, I'm not too sure if he's a boy or a girl. It's quite dark uh, compared to some of the other ones. The other ones have a little bit more gold in their in their coat. I see there's another one that's also quite dark, but you see the contrast between the two of them. So just like we talk about zebras and leopards having unique spot patterns, the wild dogs also have unique patterns, and each one of them is easily identifiable by looking at the pattern. Now, I don't know if perhaps some of our more savvy viewers out there have an ID on this particular pack. My guess would be that it's the same one that we saw a few days ago, but I could be wrong because it's quite hard for me to <laughs> ID some of the wild dogs. I think maybe this is the most prominent character. So if you do know who we're looking at, feel more than welcome to send through your comments using the hashtag Safari Live. Now, all the heads are up. All right, what's going on, guys? What you looking at? Just like that, sleeping time is over, greeting ceremony starts, all stretchy stretchy, and likely they're gonna go down to the dam for a drink, I am hoping. There's one that's refused to go anywhere, he sat back down, and I wonder... Oh, there's one, okay, the one that we were looking at, it's ahead of the game and he's got a little bit of a limp, so... Well, clearly we shall follow wherever the wild dogs lead. Let's just let them get going. 
I wonder what it is that they've been hearing in that general direction. There are often nyala around camp, so I wonder if perhaps they haven't been hearing some nyala or if they spotted something. Because we've driven uh, here just pretty much in the uh, from the direction where they're looking at. So they're looking. Morning Rex, there is a shlambi of Madaj just in front of Uyatela, um heading towards the waterhole. All right, let's go. All right, sorry, um, Lou, I believe that you had a question. Can you go again? Copy, make your way. James, no, no individuals with the color. That's what I was checking as well for, because I know the previous one that we saw had one, but I can't see a color run about here. So I'm, I, don't, I don't think there are any. So perhaps this is another pack of wild dogs, which would make it all the way more interesting. Hello, doggies. And they are pretty much in front of the lodge. Imagine this, imagine waking up and just seeing a pack of wild dogs going to the water hole. You're all looking very alert, and then these big ears, you can tell that they're not the biggest animal around. The grass in many areas is often longer than them, so their big ears allow them to almost like see ahead, because they're able to pick up movements and noises, well not movements, just noises of movements, um, when they go around hunting. It's also good for them, because when they start hunting or when they start moving around, often they'll bombshell, and each one of them will go in a bit of a different direction while they're trying to chase animals. So it's a good way then to be able to listen out to get the pack all back together. Marianne, you're wondering why wild dogs are so endangered. Well, there's a couple of reasons. One of them, or the main one I would say, is habitat loss. Uh, they require areas very big, about 100 square kilometers is the home range of a wild dog to what's believed, unless um, <laughs> the experts from the Endangered Wildlife Trust have a new theory. But they require areas to be very big, and then when they go out hunting, the problem is that they, they can also escape from uh, protected areas. So they go into farms, they go into areas where there's cattle, and they kill a lot of the animals. And obviously, whoever or the farmers are not happy with this because you clearly don't want a dog um, killing your cattle or your way of living. So a lot of the time they get killed in retaliation. And then another major issue is the fact that they can very easily contract diseases that affect domestic dogs, but they don't have the antibodies for domestic dogs. So in the last few years, we've uh, actually lost a few packs to distemper virus and um, rabies as well. So there are all sorts of um, efforts being made in all of these areas to try and vaccinate them, and especially in the greater Kruger area, in part... Uh, parts of the Kruger just to be able to protect them and just make sure that they don't get affected by these types of diseases. Now that we're sitting still I can definitely smell them. They have a very strong smell. Perhaps with wild dogs sometimes it's one of the few animals that you can smell them before you see them. <laughs> and it's, it's a mix of dung and dirt. <laughs> That's what I can say of their smell. Where are you guys gonna go? Beautiful ears. I think they haven't quite decided what they want to do. There was definitely something that they could hear with their big ears. You see there's the one with the limp, the very dark one. But maybe they're just gonna go down for a drink. So let's try and head and follow them around see what it is that they get up to. Mm. I'm gonna smell like wild dog this afternoon. Mm, mm, mm. Oh guys, not into the drainage. <laughs> Some hadidas that just decided to take flight because they're a bit scared of the dogs. And there we go. Are you and interesting that they are not too far from where Tristan had the tracks of all of those um lions. So I wonder if they ha they are not listening out for maybe a leopard 
or maybe lie in somewhere in the drainage because we do know the Yankahuma part likes the drainage lines around this area so I wonder it's quite an interesting question this one although I think I'm just being alarming for no particular reason likely they've all gone into different spots what are you guys looking at? These are the times when you feel inferior as a human because you definitely cannot see whatever it is that they're looking at or hearing. Off they go. Jeffrey, you're wondering if wild dogs hunt more in, at night or during the day. Well, they tend to hunt more during the day. They are <laughs> diurnal creatures. So they're not like, um, they'll, they'll hunt just as the sun is coming up and as the sun is coming down. But, um, I wonder, sorry, I just want to go where they go. But uh, normally they rest throughout the night and they don't hunt as much during the night as they do during the day. Let's have a look, we're going down right into the dam, which normally in a very <laughs> rainy season we wouldn't even be able to cross because it would be almost like a death trap. But working in our favor today, as it's actually quite dry, and then we can have another look at these beautiful dogs. Guys, where are you going? You're going. Definitely we've got one of the alpha ones, the one that with the limp that keeps running away, because whenever he starts running, then the rest of the, packs, uh, the pack follows. Now I wonder if they're not going to go to Galago Pan for a drink. If they carry on in that direction, maybe that's exactly what they're going to be doing. I'm going to move again, just to be able to get into a position where it's going to be perhaps a little bit easier for us to start following them around. Because if they carry on in the drainage line, it's going to be a little bit difficult. So while we reposition, we're going to go back to Tristan and find out how his tracking is going on.